What does this fence guard? What could be behind the old pharmacy now closed? Just a few minutes from downtown Birmingham, Alabama, it is indeed an old parking lot that one man has transformed into a farm, a tiny but marvelously productive farm. So good, it kind of We'd like you to meet Frank Stitt, five-star chef, owner of Highlands Restaurant in Birmingham, Alabama, James Beard Award winner, local boy makes good, also owns Chez Fun Fun. This top five pick of Gourmet Magazine's best restaurants list opened yet another of Birmingham's finer eateries, Bottega. We are now inviting Chef Stitt to step along this alleyway so that we may all be surprised by what is behind that fence. I'll show you what I did over here and whatever here. These Actually started from about maybe 20 plants. That yeah. Michael Dean used to work for Frank's tip. Michael was waiting tables while dreaming of farming. If we can, we'd like to do like a leeks vinaigrette. So this, you know, it looks like just your normal backyard, but it was a parking lot. It was, sure was. Uh, it's amazing what you can do with, if you just have an idea. It is Dean's little acre just under a half acre to be precise. Small, but oh my, what it turns out. Heaps of greens and radishes and carrots and beets. Bushels of clean, wholesome nourishment. So that it's a lot easier to harvest. You don't have to, you know, break your back. There's dirt and there's dirt. And there's the soil that Michael Dean has built, created, mixed, made, designed. Just pH. listen to what's in it. Uh, this is straw, pine straw, gypsum, cottonseed mill, horse, uh -huh. and chicken litter. Uh -huh. uh, it then is sterilized, so all the weed seeds are gone. I got gotcha. you. But it also adds just a light lightness to the soil, so it does, things aren't really packed down. Exactly. Like Your clay soils that hold in that water, and really, uh, you get that kind of cryptobiotic crust. It's hard for seeds to break through. Right. Um, you'll see after about three years, I'll show you the... biotic <laughs> crust. All right, Michael, you got me on that one, man. <laughs> but but our... you, you'll be able to tell the difference in that soil that's had it for maybe about a year. Right. And this far one down here, I'll go show you. It's okay. been about five years now that since I've been using this stuff. Dean has made soil so loose, you can poke your hand into it. If it is leaks you're growing, it's easy to scoop the soil again and again, keeping a mound growing around the plant blanching it so that you may harvest a prize white leek. So it's uh, pretty easy to pull out of the ground and to hill up around. Uh -huh. And as the rain comes, it washes over the side. Wow. But Mike, this is amazing. I mean, this is just, I had no idea that it, you had this much going on. Well, it wasn't always this big. You know, every year you just try to add a little bit more, you know, get a little bit bigger and something else I taste of yours. I'm like, man, I should try growing that, you know, really. Here's the arugula we're going to wow, cut yeah. for you this week. <laughs> I'd say we've got enough for tonight. <laughs> yeah, we're going to have plenty for tonight. This little arugula is, is really delicate. Mm. I say delicate, but for a lot of people, arugula is kind of spicy and kind of aggressive to them. And, you know, everybody always says the flavor's nutty. And I think, that, you know, it's got a little nutty quality and a little mustardy, peppery yeah, quality. that's what I think of as mustards and peppers. Mm -hmm. How old is this? This is actually about 21 days old. It makes sense for you as a grower if you can get a crop that you can harvest in 21 days. And actually, the microgreens that you can harvest in about a week and a half. This is great. <laughs> this is great. Do you like your carrots? Figure they are nutritious. Are you aware that they are much more nutritious if you take off those green tops? Here's why. So these are coming through. These will be. I'm gonna say about three more weeks. Uh -huh. You know, and these little tops even look beautiful. Do you eat these much, the tops? Uh, you know, I don't, and I don't, and it's not because I wouldn't, it's just that I, I really don't know what to do with them, to be honest with you. Uh, I don't like leaving them on the carrot because it, they tend to sap the energy they out do. from it after you That's right. uh, sell it. I see them in the stores like that, and I'm, I, I just didn't make sense, and I know you don't mind that I cut off the tops, I just throw them in the compost pile, so. Right. 
No, I want to see that in a little while. Let's see the compost pile. Yeah. This is Nelson. This is a, uh, it's a high beta carotene carrot. So it's really from Johnny's bright Johnny's Seeds. Oh, uh -huh. yeah. Wow, these are beautiful. Get, uh, those are a little bit bigger. Carrots are sponges. In the manner of plants, they soak up what's in the soil. If that happens to be poison, herbicides, pesticides, some other pollutant, well, it gets into the carrot, of course. In Dean's patch, just pull up the carrot, rinse, and eat. Nothing there but nutrients. I'm going and pull them and wash them off and grab something to eat. What I'll do is I'll just pull them up by the handful. If there's anything that's crooked, I'll just eat it that I don't deem worthy of selling. Oh, man, look at these. And they're all over too, aren't they? This is so easy to plant too. Dig it a quarter inch deep and keep it watered for the first three weeks because germination takes a little while. This dirt is yeah, so no, no. This nice. This has been added for about five years now. This and is... you can go all the way down just with your hands. Uh-huh. You know, a whole foot and a half. Right. And it seems like there's almost a little sandy yeah. in there too. Good way to tell is if it crumbles Perhaps. up like that and then it'll just easily crumble away. That's when you got a good soil texture. I still can't believe how, how vibrant and beautiful and how great this soil is. That's the whole key. I don't fertilize plants. I just feed the soil. This will be just about right, I think. All right, let's go wash these off okay. and maybe try a couple of them. Good. Michael Dean, keeper of a chemical-free farm, small though it be, does have use for that little bottle on the end of the hose as a sprayer, water only. Spill this on here. Look how beautiful those are. Wow. They're gone. Mm -mm. You know, with these, these are just a young, they're not baby. And what we'll do with them is to be able to use them in, you know, in little sections. And, and so, mm -hmm. sweet. Mm -hmm. Sweet and really flavorful. I eat these like mm -hmm. they're style. Mm, these are great. These are really good. So we'll cut these tops off, put them in a bag, and we're ready to go. We'll go look at some beets after that. Right. You know, with these, you don't even need to peel them. I know. When the farmer puts essential, natural ingredients back in the garden, the payoff is handsome, tasty, and abundant. This just goes straight back into the garden eventually. This is a uh, hot compost tumbler. It's a mixture of uh, what you see here, the lettuce, carrots, radish tops, uh, the leaves from the trees that you see around here, uh, and, and just a touch of that mushroom compost as, a, as manure right. for it. And, and you don't, and it's certainly not bad just to have a little bit of dirt in there too. Exactly. And then of course all it really needs is air, water, and the correct carbon to nitrogen ratio, which is three to, uh, 30 to one. And uh, of course Carbon all, to nitrogen ratio. Uh, the okay. nitrogen would be all the green right. uh, parts and the carbon would be all your dry brown mm -hmm. stuff. But you don't want to use wood, it takes too long, but leaves. Leaves are good. Yeah, actually, and then of course every leaf has a different <laughs> carbon ratio. Uh, oak leaves have a higher one. Pine straw is a little bit more acidic. Spin this about every two days. See all that white down in here? Yeah. Looks like ash almost. Yeah. yeah. That's the fungi that breaks down this and converts nitrogen into ammonium nitrate in a usable form. That's pretty much my fertilizer. Gotcha. We're gonna look at some beach too. They're almost just beautiful ornamental. Uh... <laughs> yeah, exactly. So uh, of course we got the golden beets oh, here. Let's find a good nice man. That one. One's These beautiful are the chiogas right, right there. Go ahead and pull that one out. That's the candy striped one. Oh, they are beautiful. These are my favorite right here, the golden. Yep, me too, me too. I think those are the sweetest. Man, especially when you cook those and slice them in mm -hmm. that color. You know, but one thing I, I think that you need to do is cook them separately so you, you don't bleed the color Bleed them out. together. Yeah, you, you know, know I noticed that. that. Mm -hmm. uh, especially with the red ones, they're like the worst. Yep, they really stain. God, these are gorgeous. And these, the, the tops, are. we've been cooking those and really enjoying those yep. too. And you know, it's crazy that you can get uh, totally daily allowance of folic acid, vitamin A, and vitamin C just from a single helping of beets. Is that right? Mm -hmm. And nobody knows it. Oh, well, <laughs> I see, I love beets. I, eat, we, I have them everywhere. Yeah. These are the bull's blood I wanted to show you. Oh boy, those are beautiful. You, get... you know, I'm shocked. You know, Michael, what do you figure? How much, how much land is here? This is not, this is like a big backyard. This yeah. is not even, 
uh, I thought a, this was going to be almost a, a half acre. Okay. If you include the whole entire thing from front to back and corner to corner. And the other amazing thing, besides it not being that big, and that we're just <laughs> 15 minutes from town from the restaurants, and um, you're not depleting the soil. It's all just about where you live here in the south. Abundance of trees and leaves and grass. We kind of just replant as we go. These are the French breakfast radishes yeah. that we got here. And Look usually at them I'll just popping out of the ground. Man, I could grow enough radishes to feed the city in about a 10-foot square plot. So. Why? Because they grow so fast? Yeah, this is about 25 days here, and they take up no room whatsoever. Our thing is as a chef is growing for flavor and varieties that are just picked and lo grown locally. But then, you know, when we're talking about sustainable agriculture, but we're also talking about just the healthy quality of this kind of food and eating like this and picking in the d during the day and eating this food at that night. night. <laughs> and I just think this is incredible. Now let's go wash these off and maybe try a couple of them. Those are beautiful. It makes me want to have a bite of pate and a little crunch of radish. <laughs> I actually tried one of those guys. Mm. Not bad. A little spicy, but tender. I really admire you for pulling this off and well, being committed to it. No doubt that I wouldn't be doing it if you hadn't got me started. I was just a little, little tiny bit. You're the one that's done all the work and had the vision to make it happen. So I really appreciate it. Yeah, I appreciate that. it. Mm -hmm. Thanks, Mike. Got a bunch of stuff for you tonight. Huh? All right, I got to go. <laughs> you do, don't you? Mm -hmm. I grew up here in a small town in North Alabama, Coleman, and it was an agricultural town. And my grandfather, White, had a wonderful farm, and they had asparagus and peas and beans and corn and tomatoes and chickens and quail and guinea hen and their own uh, beehives and grape arbors. And so my grandmother's had this incredible farm table where she put up and preserved food uh, in the summertime and we would have these incredible lunches of uh, almost all vegetables in the summertime. And it was old southern cooking but it was just prepared with the love of the land. And I think that as a kid there was something really wonderful that I treasured about that. And then my mother was an incredible cook, and she could not be happier than when she had a, a table full of people, of friends and family and guests that she could cook for. And so, even though I didn't start out caring about cooking, there was something magic about the table that, that I loved. And there's something about the South and the people, the integrity of the the character of the people, that after going to Boston and San Francisco and, and France and, and the Caribbean, you know, I decided, well, let's bring all that back to Alabama and, and open a restaurant, and a restaurant that I wanted to make as great as possible. And that's when I opened the Highlands in 82. Uh, and it's just been a, an incredible ride ever since then. So what I'd like to do is a very, very simple dish, and this is something that we do at Chez Fon Fon. Uh, well, we started doing it last year with asparagus. And we do it, uh, but this time we're going to do a traditional French bistro dish of uh, leeks, a variation on leeks vinaigrette. And these are these baby leeks that we just picked uh, yesterday afternoon. And so we're going to uh, basically just simmer them in a, a little salted water. Then we're going to use these farm eggs with, mixed with lots of fresh herbs, some chives, some tarragon, some dill little lemon zest, some olive oil, some shallots, and we're going to make this wonderful vinaigrette that's kind of enriched with these farm eggs, and then serve that on top of the leeks. Sometimes we'll serve it grilled, but today I guess we'll just serve it just warm with that vinaigrette. So what we do is we can use these leek tops for our uh, stocks, and to make a little herb bouquet, often what you can do is just fold them up like that, tie them up with some other herbs, and put those into your stock pot. And uh, then what we will, we're going to do is to clean these, we traditionally will make just a little cross like that. And what happens with leeks is that, as Michael was saying, you know, he mounds the dirt up and over them. And so they're just bound to have little tiny bits of sandy dirt in there. And when you make that little cross, you can kind of 
you know, run your thumb in there and separate the leaves and just get all the sand and dirt out. And while we're doing that, I'm going to drop these farm eggs in and just to some boiling water. We're going to cook those about nine minutes. And then I'm going to have just some, you know, as most chefs, we always use kosher salt. I think one of the reasons is that we can get a really big handful of it and throw it in there. And it has more of a tactile feel that we like. When we try to focus on organic produce, often there are little bugs in there. And it's nothing to freak out about. A lot of times it just kind of is a statement of how healthy the farm is that you may have some little ladybugs or things like that in there. You don't have to tie these up. You can just drop these in and uh, while those are cooking, let's make a little vinaigrette. You know, shallots are something that in the restaurant world we couldn't live without. Uh, shallots are just something that have kind of a subtle flavor that just adds an incredible goodness to our vinaigrettes and sauces and our sautés. We're going to add a pinch of salt, fresh ground pepper, a little bit of lemon juice. Macerating the shallots with the uh, vinegar or uh, lemon juice allows the shallots to kind of mellow out and to uh, kind of subtly get their flavor into the vinaigrette. And this is just some good sherry vinegar. We could use white wine vinegar or tarragon vinegar. What we like to do is let that macerate for 10, 15 minutes. And good uh, extra virgin olive oil. This is such a simple dish, it's really pretty important that all the ingredients are just as great quality and purity as possible. While that's finishing, let's go ahead and we'll get a little bit of our tarragon. And you know, some herbs that are that go together nicely, are certainly chives and tarragon, parsley. Uh, some people might question the dill. And then I've got my chopped egg, which we've cooked a few ahead of time. Fresh herbs. There we go. Let's lift those out. Mmm, mmm, mmm. So those smell incredible. Leeks are so, so delicate in their flavor to me. So we're going to serve these just like this with a little bit of this egg and herb vinaigrette. And maybe a few more chives around. Just a little bit of some more fresh herbs. You could use chervil. We just have this pretty dill that we just picked yesterday. And that's it. That's our leeks vinaigrette with a fresh farm egg and herb sauce that goes with these wonderful leeks. Since we're able to get such incredible vegetables from Michael's that we're going to do a uh, little vegetable ragu. What we're going to include are these unbelievably beautiful and tasty beets. Some of the golden beets, some of the candy stripe beets, chioga beets. Most of these vegetables can be cooked pretty much uh, with just a little bit of butter. I'm going to get some of these wonderful carrots that we pulled out of the ground yesterday afternoon and try not to take much of the skin off of them. I'm going to cut these all pretty much the same length 
It's kind of unusual. Think of radishes as a vegetable that you would uh, saute. We'll add our radishes. We'll add our carrots and parsnips and apples. I'm going to add the apples right at the last. And I'm going to add these potatoes, these fingerling potatoes, which we've already cooked. I'm going to add those with the apples along with these beets. And as you, what we've done with these beets are to put them in just a little gratin dish a splash of water, salt and pepper, olive oil, cover them with aluminum foil, and then bake them. If the carrots, they only take about five minutes, the parsnips about five, the pearl onions and cipollinis, they probably need about so, uh, 10 to 12 minutes. One thing we do, and it's not cheating, but to add just a little pinch of sugar uh, to this, and what happens is that all of these nice vegetable juices become really flavorful and syrupy and good. Okay, so now we're at this nice state. These vegetables are just about where I want them. Uh, add our apples and our potatoes and some of these wonderful beets. And as we let those cook a little bit more, we're going to let those juices just bubble down. Now, one of the things, though, is that you do have to kind of pay attention because if all of this would reduce down too far, it would kind of scorch and you would lose all the goodness that you've developed in the pan. Uh, I'm going to add a ladle of chicken stock, just pure, clean, nice chicken stock. salt and you I'm going to add some butter a little olive oil some lemon juice just a drop of vinegar swirl that in Mmm, wow. And so you're going to get these really kind of bizarre and unusual combinations with radishes, the beets, the apple, the potatoes, the pearl onions. And again, we could just add a variety of herbs depending on what's the season. This is the kind of the wonderful thing to learn about. You could make this basically with the four seasons and like I was saying, with even a little variation within each season. You know, one of the things I think cooking with the local farmers, it just forces us to, to be seasonal and it forces us to kind of pay attention. And I think that makes for better food. These unusual flavors, these kind of sweet and savory. This is our little farmer vegetable ragu from here in November in Birmingham, Alabama.